On tonight's episode of the Mike Pressler Show, we break down the Bulldogs' wins over Holy Cross and Quinnipiac. We sit down with senior midfielder Matt Larson. And of course, we preview the week ahead, including Friday's Battle of the Bulldogs at Yale and Sunday's home finale against Wagner. It's all here next on the Mike Pressler Show on Cox Sports Television. Well, good evening and welcome to this week's episode of the Mike Pressler Show. We're here at Blackie's Bulldog Tavern in Smithfield, Rhode Island. I'm Mike Mancuso, joined as always by the head coach of the Bryant men's lacrosse team, Mike Pressler. And coach, another great week for your guys. Two wins, a win over Holy Cross, a win over Quinnipiac. You remain 19th in the media poll and the coaches poll. And uh, you're only one of eight teams in all of Division One with 10 or more wins at this point in the season. So congratulations on all that. In our good news corner, Peter McMahon last week picking up New England Intercollegiate Lacrosse Association Player of the Week honors. And also for the fifth straight time, the seventh time overall, Kevin Massa, the freshman, picking up the NEC Rookie of the Week after his faceoff performance. 26 of 39, that's good for 67% in the two games. And also 13 ground balls. So plenty of good news to start off the day. Uh, just a great week for us. Um, uh, very, very impressed by our guys, especially in the Holy Cross game. This has been a, a remarkable month, a remarkable stretch. You know, ten in a row. These uh, these three Tuesday night uh, victories on the road, highlighted by that um, by our performance in the Holy Cross game, and uh, to hang 17 on those guys. I was really surprised. Uh, I thought it was going to be a one-two goal game battle. Holy Cross tradition was very good at home. Another one of those high school trips for us. And then we finished the week out. Uh, probably not, you know, we didn't nearly play as well against Quinnipiac as we did Holy Cross. But um, any win on the road is certainly a good one, and especially to make us 3-0 and in the NEC. Yeah. So we'll start tonight by talking about that Tuesday night game. You went up to Worcester to take on the Crusaders. You came home with a 17-3 victory that improved you to 10-2 on the season. You remained at 2-0 in NEC play. And it was your ninth straight win, and you even shut them out for the entire second half. So why don't we get right to some highlights from that win over Holy Cross. You know, a point of emphasis in this game was getting our attack going off the dodge, and Travis Arrington just, just did that. Ran right by number seven for the first one. That was his tenth of the season. You know, Max Wiesenberg here, a nice uh, roll back to his left hand for goal number two, I believe. That was his thirteenth tally of the year for the and Bulldogs. And uh, the second line in the sub game, and Kyle Crowley to Mason Poli, who buries one. We've seen that all year. And that Dan actually Cipri. gave the first lead of the game, yeah. and you never look back. Dan Sipley in front of the cage, getting his own. Alex Sommerfeld gets to the middle. We did a good job all night getting to the middle of the field. Now we'll see how an entire goal develops here. It all starts at the faceoff X with Kevin Massa. Kevin Massa battles in the X here. You know, ground ball to Matt Larson. They kind of double team Matt. We uh, Peter McMahon comes kind of out of nowhere. Great ground ball. You know, you pick it up and move it off the ground. One, two, three, four, and Travis finishes in front. Probably our most exciting goal of the season, in my opinion. We made it 7-2 at that point in the second quarter. You know, Glenn Mayorano off the defensive grounder. We've seen all that all year. He's got great range, great length. Alex Zommerfeld in transition, transition here. Again, getting to the front of the goal. Great one more to Peter McMahon. 16th tally of the year for Peter. Kevin Mass again off the X. Doing his thing. Remarkable freshman campaign. Dan Sipperly, great stick protection. And that was another man-up goal for Dan Sipperly. Colin Dunster, a little rollback. You're not stopping that to his right hand. And that was with just 30 seconds left in the second quarter. A little backdoor cut by Cody Isdain, our extra man. Mason Poli in transition. Travis Harrington inside roll against their uh, very strong group of coast defensemen. Great hit by Colin Dunster in the middle of the field. And that was another goal by Sipperly there, his 11th tally of the year. Great one more from Travis to uh, Dakota again. Jamison Love making a routine. A couple of routine saves there, but for him are very routine. For other people were pretty spectacular. Well, Jamison had a fantastic night. 10 saves on 13 shots, saving about 77% of the shots. So, and again, shutting them out for the entire second half. So again, the final score, 17-3, the big win over the Crusaders. You guys had eight different goal scorers. 
led by Travis Harrington's four goals and assists, and Dan Siberly, a six-point performance, three goals and three assists. And look, at the numbers a little bit closer. The ground balls 39-20 in your favor once again. Faceoffs overall for the team 15 of 22. And I think something that had been missing a little bit in a few previous weeks: the man-up situation. You guys wound up three of four. When you take all that into consideration, what were you most happy with in that game? Everything. It was a complete performance. Um, we won every every category. Uh, probably our most dominant performance. I put that one right up next to the Mount St. Mary's game and to do it on the road in an environment where we've uh, struggled in the past. I mean, two years ago they beat us up there. Uh, Holy, Holy Cross, who, who was so much improved, took Bucknell to one goal, had Colgate, you know, two goals in the fourth quarter. and. Uh, very, very impressive, impressive win by our guys. Yeah, so after that win, you had a few days of practice, then you headed down to Hamden, Connecticut, where you took on the Bobcats of Quinnipiac. Came away 9-5 winners. It improved you guys to 11-2, 3-0 in NEC play, and almost more importantly, your 10th straight win, and also your first NEC road win. You're now tied for first place in the conference with Robert Morris. And, you know, game in, game out, you seem to be getting great effort and energy, uh, no matter the weather, the venue, or the trip. Uh, you were up 5-1 early in the second quarter, and then they cut it to 5-4, and that seemed to be kind of a crucial point in the game. You went on to score the next four goals, and you won 9-5. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the Quinnipiac game. You know, very, very different game than Holy Cross overall. Much slower game. They played a lot of zone. That's Brian Schlangster, our, our creative freshman, again off with his left hand. You know, great shooter there. Travis Harrington, you know, again, this is mostly against their zone. Yeah, you guys got off to a hot start. One time they played man here on the second line, had a great day. As I mentioned, Brian Schlangster, three goals on, on three shots. Jameson Love doing a great job, not only saving the ball, but catching it. That was our sixth goal, huge goal right there, separately to uh, Peter McMahon. And again, uh, Jameson over the top to Max Wiesenberg here. Again, transition D to O. And uh, a one more, a one more. And a one more. Great handle by Dan Sipperly on the doorstep. And that made it 7 4 at the time. Kyle Crowley, great through ball to uh, Brian Schlangster. Alex Zomerfeld uh, in the passing lane, great interception for him. You know, Quinnipiac again, very unorthodox team. A lot of young players do a lot of different things than we normally see. Colin Dunster, great footwork here, stepping away. One more to to, uh, to Travis, one more to Dan. That was the ninth goal. Again, Jamison just doing a great job catching the ball. Yeah, and Jamison Love would finish the day with six saves on 11 shots. He did have the five goals allowed. Six Bulldogs found the back of the net, but I think more importantly, there was an assist on every single goal. Brian Schlansker leading the way with a hat trick. Sipperly, two goals and assists. Peter McMahon, a goal and two assists. And Travis Harrington continuing his point streak with a goal and two assists as well. As you look at some of the numbers, one that really jumped out at me, the ground ball battle. For the first time, you guys lost 25-24. Really disappointed in that. I've been very disappointed. Uh, uh, not our best effort on the ground, certainly the numbers show it. Give Quinnipiac credit there. Um, you know, we didn't have our best up, Mike. We, we just didn't. It was the uh, end of a long uh, couple weeks here for our guys. Another road trip, another high school trip. No excuses. We could have hit, played better. But at the end of the day, you know, when you win and you don't have your best stuff, that's a good thing. Right. And as you mentioned, uh, I know during the game against Mount St. Mary's, the carrot at the end of the tunnel is getting that home field advantage. So these conference games, Huge. even if you're winning them by one, two, a, a win is a win, especially in conference. And uh, again, just so important as you guys continue this winning streak that you've been on. And we take a look overall at that game. What were you most happy with, though? I know you were a little disappointed with some of the play, but what did you take out of that as a positive? Um, <laughs> It wasn't a whole lot of positive other than the score. I think the assisted goals certainly. Um, I was pretty pleased how we handled the zone. Um, they, again, changed it up on us a lot, played man, played zone, kind of had us on our heels a little bit. Um, really, really most impressed with, I, I would say, the second midfield. Uh, Brian Schlankster's group, Bo Redpath, Kyle Crowley, really had a solid game. So if you look at a unit, it was that unit in particular that played very well. Right. And now tonight's guest in the second segment is going to be senior midfielder Matt Larson. What can you tell us about Matt? As you can see, Matt's, um, when I mention Matt, it brings a smile to my face. Yeah. Uh, Matt was one of our original recruits here, a uh, young man I'm very, very fond of. Uh, 
uh, one, of the, one of the greatest athletes I've ever coached in all my stops, and um, a young man who came back uh, from a severe back injury, his, missed his senior year, uh, great student here, got him into grad school, was, uh, was going to get a master's in accounting, and uh, moved him to defensive midfield early in the year, and that move, if anything we did early in the season, has paid dividends for the Bulldogs, to say the least. Certainly has. We'll have that interview with senior midfielder Matt Larson coming up next here on the Mike Pressler Show.